To produce food, well, we need more land, we need to increase, increase yields, uh, but there's also another important part that uh, we must not forget, it's we need farmers. And uh, the age of the farmers is a growing problem in most regions. If you take in North America, the average age of a farmer is you know, around 57, 58, uh, which means that if we look at uh, the horizon to 2050, uh, if nothing changed, if there was not a renewal of the farmers, uh, the farmers' population, then we could end up having an average age of farmers who are in their 90s. Uh, that seems rather unrealistic. And yet, uh, we're suddenly going to see, I think, the average age of farmers is still going to, to increase in the future. There is a shortage of young people who want to be in agriculture, and that is a problem. And if there are less and less farmers, uh, then the farms are also going to become bigger and bigger. And then there's a question of how do you manage bigger farms all the time, uh, especially if you know, you're getting older and you're not as dynamic as you used to be. And that's where technology is going to bring a number of very interesting solutions. Uh, there are already a, a lot of uh, developments that are just amazing uh, in terms of robotics, in terms of sensors. Uh, today you can have uh, from the satellite a, a screening of, uh, of your field, so you know the status of your field in terms of nutrients. You know where uh, the land is fertilized properly and you know where you have some areas uh, that need more fertilizer. Uh, and you can see that all, all directly from, uh, from the satellite. Uh, the GPS technology has been in tractor cabins for a long time. So if you combine those two, you can see that you almost can uh, automize and direct uh, from, the, uh, from the satellite with the software, you can decide when to open the valves or not from uh, your, uh, your fertilizing equipment and then just bring the fertilizers exactly where you need it at the time you need it. Uh, the, the need for precision agriculture is just only going to grow and that's also part of being sustainable. Uh, we're going to be in a world where we're not, we're not going to be in a position to waste anything anymore. Uh, we cannot afford to waste water, we cannot afford to waste uh, nutrients, uh, we cannot afford uh, also to have uh, contaminants going and uh, chemicals going in the environment. So everything is going to be focused more and more on bringing every molecule where it's needed and nowhere else. We don't want to have any molecule of water, any molecule of fertilizer, any molecule of, um, of chemical to go in the environment. We want all those things to do their work exactly where they have to do it. And it's interesting to see the possibilities of having a lot of, and gathering a lot of information about the field, about production, but also about the environment. Uh, there is a development of drones more and more, and today you have you can find kind of a, a drone which is the size of a, and looks a little bit like a stealth bomber, and it's about. $25,000 and it has a three hour autonomy time and it can gather a lot of information. Uh, there is a development of all sorts of sensors when you can uh, find out when there is a need for, for water, for instance. So if you bring all of this in a software and you uh, combine all those technologies, uh, you end up having something that's very interesting. There is a possibility of gathering a lot of data there is a possibility of processing a number, <laughs> an amount of data that a human brain probably could not do, uh, certainly not at the same speed, and that can give information about your growing conditions on the field, but also what happens in the environment. You can monitor your sustainability, and from the moment you can do that, then you can take the right actions to improve uh, the sustainability of your operation your computer is going to be able to decide what kind of actions to take so that you can do it before, well, there is a storm or there is rain. Uh, and by combining all of this, you can see that we're just one step ahead of having robots running the farm. Uh, today, there already are a number of projects to have uh, uh, agricultural machines that can be operated without a driver. Uh, the tractor can be next to the combined harvester and take its data from the, from the GPS. And what you see is the tractor can turn in the field, drive back and forth, and there is no driver. You just see the steering wheel uh, turning. 
So we're very close. There's some very interesting developments in terms of robotics as well. Uh, by having uh, groups of robots that can work together and that can exchange information with each other. So they function almost like people, uh, as a team of people, but they are robots. And, well, the advantage of robots, they can work at any time of day or night. They can, <laughs> they're not bound with any limitations of how long they have to work. And this is a very serious avenue, I think, for the future. We're going to see more and more work being done by machines instead of by, uh, by people. And not operated by, by people as such, but operated by a computer. Uh, in terms of crop protection, it's also interesting to see the development of robots that basically can identify in the field uh, the weeds. They can dis uh, distinguish the weeds from uh, the crops at a very early stage and then there's the possibility of applying the treatment right away at the right place, just there, not have to put it all over the field if it's not needed and being very efficient in, uh, in fighting weeds. So all those things are going to, to change agriculture, in my view. Uh, there's going to be a very uh, uh, totally different future. It's going to be a really a combination of man and technology working together uh, like it's not done before. And that's going to improve production, but I'm convinced also that that's going to improve sustainability of agriculture. <laughs>